on January the 6th, 2008, we were going out on the West Isle to do food herring for the Canadian Fishing Company. The weather was not too bad when we made the set in Pelagius Channel, but by the time we were working on it more and more, the wind was coming up more and more and more. It was blowing about 35 southeast, and it was snowing, and it was cold. It was just getting dark at the time, so this is when all the herring started to come up and fish started getting heavy, right? The boat started listing over. All of a sudden, bang, the banging winch, the snap, the boom went right over. And I told uh, Dennis, let down the, let the single go. But when I went to let down on the single, it just came down really, really, really slow. The net's getting further away from us because the wind's blowing us away from the net. Then uh, we started to list more and more. And we were talking back and forth. Well, maybe we should let the set go. In the meantime, the boat's going over, over. When it started going over the bulwarks, I knew we were, we were going to roll right over. The water was starting to come over the rail, and I just started walking up around the side of the cabin. And the boat just laid over on her side like that, and then all the fish started pouring out of the tanks. And that's when I knew we were in trouble. I grew up on a float house, on the water all my life. As you grew up, you got to, to be a strong enough swimmer that you could swim across the little bay that we lived in, which was a couple of hundred yards across and back. You graduated and you didn't have to wear your life jacket. September 2nd, 2011, it was late in the season. I took the group of guests out. There was eight of us on board. We were fishing seven miles offshore. It was blowing southeast, seas are rough. I had my size 11 steel-toed gumboots on, long johns, jeans, rain gear, a big wool sweater, my rain jacket, no life jacket on. None of us on board, the life jackets were on the boat. I was on the back deck running the fishing rods. I was leaning against a small safety strap, reaching out to gaff a halibut. And at that time, the safety strap broke and I went face first into the water. Ben was athletic and artistic, musical. He just had one of those winning personalities where he could make you laugh, he could change your mind, he could pull you out of a slump. He was just amazing that way. June 6, 2014 was a Friday at about 1.20 thereabouts. I got a really panicked phone call from my daughter saying, Mom, uh, Ben Skipper just got a hold of me. Something's wrong. Call him now. Then I called them and they told me that Ben had fallen overboard and that he was being evacuated and they didn't know anymore. Ben was at the back of the boat setting the line. Nobody saw the accident happen and we don't really know what happened, but it appears as though he was caught in the rope that was the line for the traps and pulled overboard. When I was on the side of the boat, with Pat and Art, and I'm looking at them and they're looking at me. And I remember thinking to myself, God, I hope I don't look as scared as they do because they just had this look of fear on their face. I'll never forget that as long as I live. When the, the boat rolled over, I was holding on to the side of the boat. And when I was going down, I took that deep breath. <sighs> and when I came up, I was okay. Like I took the deep breath in, and I went in and splashed down and, I, and as I came out of the water, I took a breath of air, a wave came, went right in my mouth and it was full of diesel. And that's where 
I panicked. I literally panicked, right? Because now all of a sudden I felt like I was drowning. And I'm just thinking to myself, I got to calm down. And I thought to myself, this is not where Mrs. Wallachuk's little boy is going to die. Right? <laughs> He stayed afloat long enough to yell, and the crew heard. So they turned the boat around, and they went to go get him. But by the time they'd picked him up and out of the water, he was probably already gone. But they kept trying, so they tried to do CPR. They made aid out. Everybody tried so hard. I mean, he was 25 years old. They tried really hard to bring him back. I didn't make it. We could see lights for a while. Engine was going and everything to get. Then when the boat went down, uh, it was all dark. And we were holding, and that's when I saw, I don't know where everybody was. I guess what was going on in my mind, I think we're finished, eh? No PFD. No nothing, I got all my clothes, all my gear on. And when I went in the water, I thought, holy smokes. All I had left was prayer. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And all of a sudden, it was just a beautiful, beautiful feeling. I was like, I didn't matter if I was gonna die. I'd accepted death. Just then Dempsey came around on the power skiff and I said to Dempsey, come grab me and I'll, and I'll help you look for your dad. That's when I realized how cold I was. Couldn't feel my legs, I couldn't feel my hands. I could barely feel my own face, right, sort of thing. And I could hear this, dad, dad. And they came closer and they came closer and then they got alongside of us and then the four of them pulled me in and there was that much water in the bottom of the skiff but I don't know what happened to Pat on the other end. I went down, 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 and I was struggling to swim in panic mode. With no air in your lungs, with all that gear on, I was losing ground. I was still sinking down. At that point, I think that I was probably 30, 35 feet below the surface. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the yellow line from one of the fishing rods going past me, and I took a random swipe at it. And when I did, I got two wraps of the line around my right arm. And uh, when that happened, the rod on the back deck of the boat actually flipped up like it was going to jump overboard. And one of the, the clients on board grabbed the rod and uh, reeled me up to the surface. The wind was blowing by this time. It was blowing probably 40 anyways. It was blowing pretty good. The snow was going sideways. It was just, it was cold. It was miserable. And we started heading back towards where I thought the boat was. We're looking for Pat, right? And we're hollering, where are you? Where are you? And we just kept looking around, looking around, and we just kept hollering, where are you? Where are you? And there was like no answer. <sighs> And I said to Chris, I says, what do you want to do? I says, I can't find him. <coughs> and he says, well, we have to go. So I said, you know, we, we can't find Pat. So I was the one that said, okay, better head for the dock. We're going to try and save us. The loss of Pat didn't only hit me, but it hit this whole community. He was not only a cousin, he was my brother, eh? we were blood. It was heartbreaking, devastating really, to his immediate family. And everything just kind of stopped dead. We kind of stopped dead when he died. And life is different without him. Very, very, very different without him. I tell that story to my customers twice a week on the importance of wearing your life jacket or your PFD when you're on the water. You know, you can be the best swimmer out there, you can be growing up on the water all your life, 
and it takes a millisecond for an accident like that to happen. 2008, January the 6th, when we left for the fishing grounds, there was no thought of me or any one of my crew dying. No thought at all. And when coming back and Pat didn't come with me, that really hurt, and it hurts today. I mean, if we all had PFDs on, you know, like we more than likely would have found Pat right then and there. I think if Ben had worn a PFD, he would have had a couple more minutes of above water time. He just needed a few more minutes that he didn't get. You know, this is real. When you get on that boat, you have a chance of rolling over. But if you get on that boat and you have a PFD, you have a big chance of surviving. And that's what I see. If you're in the water and you you know you can't swim or you know your boots pull you under or whatever, I mean you just don't have a chance. This way here, at least you have a chance. If I had been wearing a PFD that day, I would have hit the water and I would have floated to the surface instantly. It doesn't seem complicated. It's the most basic of safety items on a boat. It's amazing how many people take it for granted and not wear a life jacket. If I could save another person from drowning by wearing a PFT, by just doing this video, I'll be so happy. <laughs>